Today, it seems that one can't buy a computer without finding a faster and lighter one just around the corner. This is called Moore's Law, and it states that every 18 months, the number of transistors in the computer chip doubles. More transistors means more power and less cost. But actually, the end of Moore's Law is coming, in as little as six years. To understand why this may happen, let's learn how transistors work. Transistors are like miniature light switches and define how computers function. Put simply, transistors contain several different types of silicon. Two areas are n-type and act as conductors. Between them is p-type, which functions as an insulator while the transistor is off. Above this is a positive terminal called the gate. A charge applied to the gate draws electrons into the p-type silicon and turns on the transistor. To keep up with Moore's law, these transistors get smaller. Today's chips are so small that they only contain about 50 atoms between source and gate. As the electrodes move closer, it is harder to keep charge from crossing in the off state. At some point, the electrodes will just get too close and will end Moore's Law for today's computers. If computers stop getting better every year, the information age could grind to a halt. We need computer progress. The leading edge of human innovation is driven by them. Luckily, there are new types of transistors and even new computers being engineered today. Biological computers function by using cells' RNA and DNA and could possibly interact with our brains and cells. Quantum computers can have an infinite number of values rather than just zero and one, allowing them to accomplish some tasks hundreds of times faster than transistors. The road to complete conversion from transistors is a long one. It won't be possible to just build a quantum or biological computer and install Windows or OS X on it. The transition will require a reinvention of modern software and hardware, and maybe one of the biggest engineering challenges of the 21st century. It will require work from all fields of engineering and science. The end of Moore's Law is coming soon, and the time for innovation is now.